Hey, Doc Squad, Dr. White here with the Business Analysis Doctor. Today, I'm giving you a tutorial on building mind maps to navigate through projects and business analysis activities. But before we get started, if you want more business analysis, training, and tips, be sure to subscribe to the page and turn on that notification bell. With that said, let's dive in. Now let's talk about what you'll learn. First, we'll discuss what mind mapping is. Then we'll look at what mind maps are used for. We'll cover the benefits of mind maps for a project, the main components of a mind map. We'll go over mind map best practices. And then we'll look at an example mind map for a project. So what is a mind map? A mind map is a note-taking technique that's used to organize and decompose information or ideas in a visual manner. This diagram aids in visual thinking to facilitate generating ideas, making connection, and organizing thoughts. Mind mapping is also a powerful learning technique because it captures information in a manner similar to the way the human mind processes information. This is by decomposing a central topic and then categorizing and making connections between the various subtopics and elements. So what are mind maps used for? Mind maps can be used to decompose complex topics into smaller ideas, to determine how various topics or concepts are related, to explore the various facets of an issue or problem, to represent a comprehensive view of a complex topic, or to think through large issues with various components. So how can these mind maps specifically be used for a project? There are a number of ways a business analyst or project manager could use a mind map for a project, including to identify potential stakeholders and their relationships, explore key aspects of the current state, develop future state ideas and understand dependencies, support brainstorming by organizing ideas, identify and explore possible design options, and also to generate a consolidated view of the project. This is a common way business analysts and project managers use the mind maps. This can be done using the five W's and an H mind map. So throughout the lesson, I'll be applying this approach to mind mapping in the examples. In case you're not familiar with the five W's and an H method, it's a journalism technique used to gather information or solve a problem using six basic questions, including who, what, where, when, why, and how. This approach has gained popularity in the business analysis space as a framework to initiate requirement solicitation. You can learn more about this technique for requirements elicitation via the link in the description. Now let's dive into the details of the mind map. The first component of the mind map is the main topic. This is the central concept or issue of the mind map. Often, digital mind maps represent the main topic as a large node in the center of the mind map diagram. Images may also be placed in the center of the mind map as the main topic because they can convey large amounts of information. This is most common when drawing a mind map by hand or when exploring a more visual topic. Next up are topics. Topics are thoughts or ideas that elaborate on the main ideas. These represent high-level components or categories associated with the main topic. When using the five W's and an H method to explore a project, these notes will be labeled who, what, where, when, why, and how. Next, we expand out to the subtopics. These are thoughts or ideas that further elaborate on each of the topics derived from the main topic. Subtopics represent the lowest level and most detailed information about the topic. Now, each subtopic can be further decomposed or expanded as many times as needed to get the needed information, but you need to consider the spacing and arrangement when doing so. When using the five W's and an H method, you would essentially be answering each of the questions with nodes. For example, the subtopics that expand from the who node of a project might be the key groups impacted by the project, such as stakeholders, end users, or vendors. Now we have our branches. These are the lines that connect or associate the main topic, topic, and subtopic nodes with one another. When using a node-based mind map, the branches are often referred to as node lines. Branches are illustrated in different ways based on the type of mind map you create. For example, with some of the more free-flowing formats that don't have nodes, the topic and subtopics may sit on top of the branches, as you can see here. 
Now let's talk about keywords. Keywords are single words used to label the main topic, topics, and subtopics. If using images in the mind map, the keywords are used to add additional context. The keywords generally facilitate the organizing and categorizing of the concepts and encourages additional associations to be made. When using text in your mind map, it's recommended to use single keywords or brief phrases instead of lengthy sentences. The more words included in the mind map, the less likely the information will be committed to memory. Also, the process of determining keywords is thought to improve the creator's ability to filter out what's important and make more relevant connections. Now let's talk color. Color is used as a differentiator to categorize and organize topics, subtopics, and their related associations. A common approach is to use a color for each topic, subtopic, and branches so that it's easier to see which elements are directly related to each other. The last component is images. Images are used to express large amounts of information that couldn't be expressed through the textual topic headings. It's common to have a large image for the main topic, smaller images for the topics, and keywords for the subtopics. Now let's look at the best practices of mind mapping. Color code the mind map to group related ideas. It's common for each topic that stems from the main topic to have a specific color which will be assigned to all the subtopics and keywords that are derived from that topic. Make key concepts clearly visible. Print all words clearly and use images that clearly represent the topics. Singular keywords are ideal. If a single keyword isn't practical, keep text short within your mind map. Also, put only one topic or subtopic on each branch or node. Consider spacing ahead of time. Have enough space to extend your mind map and also leave space for unexpected topics or new thoughts. Use a central image for the main topic. If an image isn't practical, the text for the main topic should be much larger than any other text in the mind map. Now let's go through an example mind map for a project. For our case study, we'll use a mortgage company that's looking to implement a CRM solution. With the mind map, you should always start with the main topic node and then expand out. For mind maps that define a project such as this one, you might label the node as the project name, which might be something like implement customer relationship management system, or you can use a picture that represents the main topic like I've done here. Pictures are especially common when mind maps are drawn by hand. Now let's add our topic nodes. When using the five W's and an H method, we add our who, what, where, when, why, and how questions as the topics. Now, when using this method for a project, it may be helpful to use the project language. So I'd create the following topic nodes. The who can be represented by a keyword such as stakeholders. For the what, we're interested in the problem or opportunity that we're addressing. So this can be represented by business niche, which encompasses both of these. Now it's typically recommended for keywords to be singular, but I prefer to use business needs instead of just needs to keep the focus on the organizational needs instead of the stakeholder needs. For the where node, we are interested in the location of our stakeholders as well as the potential solution. For the when node, we'd be interested in the project timelines. The why node will focus on the project rationale and the drivers for the project. So this can be represented with a keyword such as goals. Another common keyword for the why is objectives, but I'm choosing to use goal because it's more inclusive since goals are broken down into objectives. And finally, the how node may indicate how we'll be achieving our solutions. So that's the keyword I'm choosing here. Remember, there's no right or wrong keyword choices here. The point here is to trigger your memory. So the keywords that resonate best with you for a particular project component is what you should use. And if you find that images are more effective at helping you make associations, then you can use those to represent the topic nodes as well. When using these images, it usually adds more context to have a combination of text and images. Now let's decompose each of the topic nodes to get our subtopics. Let's start with stakeholders, the who. An elicitation question you may ask regarding the stakeholders might be, who are the end users? For a CRM implementation, this will likely be the customer and customer service representatives. Another question might be, who are our partners or external stakeholders? Here, you likely have some type of vendor for the CRM application. Now let's look at the business needs. Since the business needs note represents the what questions, you may ask something like, what problem needs to be solved or what opportunity are we trying to address? 
In this case, we'll assume the project is driven by a business problem, such as low customer satisfaction rating or high customer churn rates. Now we'll look at the location node. Since this is our where node, you might ask questions like, where will the infrastructure be hosted? After some discussion and collaboration, we'll say that the team decides to target a public cloud-based solution to save on maintenance cost. Another elicitation question might be, where are the stakeholders? And this type of project may include internal and external stakeholders. Now let's look at the timelines node. This is where we ask our when questions. So you may ask questions related to the project timelines, such as when is the project kickoff? Here we'll say the project kickoff is next week. If you're provided with an exact date, that's what you'll use as the keyword. You should also ask when is the project deadline? Here we'll assume a 90-day project timeline. But again, if you have the exact date, that's what you would want to use as the subtopic. Next up is the goals node. Since this node investigates why we're doing the project, you'll likely ask questions like, why do we need this change? Based on the business problem of having a low customer satisfaction rating, the new CRM would help the mortgage company become a preferred lender. You may also need to know why the churn rate is important, since it's also one of the problems discussed. You'll probably find that reducing customer churn rates results in an increase in customer retention, which would ultimately increase profits. Finally, we'll look at the solutions node. So here, we'll ask questions related to how to achieve the goals. So you might ask something like how to get the CRM. Typically, these will be questions regarding whether we'll build the solution internally or purchase a solution from a vendor. Let's say the team decides that the budget and time frame allows for a commercial off-the-shelf product. So we'll use COTS as our keyword here. Then you may ask, how we'd go about choosing the vendor for the COTS CRM. After some feedback, the team may decide to first identify the customer pain points and then perform a vendor assessment to see which of the vendor offers a COTS solution that is optimal for addressing these pain points. Okay, so here is your project mind map for implementing a CRM application. This should provide you with a high level overview of the entire project while the color coding allows you to quickly associate the topics and subtopics. Well, folks, there you have it. This is what you need to build mind maps for your projects. If you learned something new, tell me about it below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Also, be sure to check out all of the business analysis, certification training, and tips we have for you at thebadoc.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a productive and prosperous day, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.